So, yan. Good morning. Good morning. Loud and, loud and clear ba ang aking boses, mga kapatid? Can you key in? Can you key in sa ating um, comment box? Ayan. Can you key in sa ating comment box? Please type 1 if you can hear me loud and clear, mga kapatid. Yeah, thank you for the feedback. May I just remind all the students na nagkikiin ang kanilang mga pangalan without sections. I'm not going to look for your sections when I check the attendance. Ayan, thank you sa feedback sa mga nag-type ng one dyan. Uulitin ko ha yung mga estudyante na nagkikiin ang kanilang names without their sections. I'm not going to look for your sections later on. Kaya sabi ko, please include your respective sections. So that it will be a lot easier for me to check your um, names later on sa ating um, attendance, okay? So we give a little more like four minutes for your classmates to join us. Then we start our lecture for today. So, ayan, thank you sa mga nag-feedback. Thank you so much. Then we start in about four minutes, mga kapatid, okay? Um, please lang konti. <clears throat> Tiis lang tayo konti para makapag-join yung inyong mga um, classmates. Okay? Four moments.
Yeah, so okay, ladies and gentlemen, I know that you can hear me clearly. So um, it's already 10 of 5. I think I've given you ample time to key in your names. And again, if you have um, input your name without your sections, ulitin nyo mga kapatid because I need to see your um, sections sa comment box. Okay, I need to see the sections, not just your names. Maliwanag naman siguro yan. Ayan. Include your respective sections. Ganyan. If you also have a copy, a hard copy of our, um, what do you call this, module, you can look into it while listening. Kasi yung iba, nag-blur daw yung kanilang mga um, screens. Iba-iba kasi yung frequency ng ating mga signals, internet signals. So, baka may mga blurry ang screens dyan. You can just look into your uh, modules. Okay? So, okay, I think we can start while waiting for the others. I can see 100 students on my screen. <clears throat> there are four sections on today's lecture, sections A, B, C, and I. So, 100, yeah, 101, Dalmatians. Ngayon yung nandiyan sa aking screen. Just keep commenting your name. I'm going to check attendance. Okay? Mamaya din. And then after the lecture, as I have told you earlier, I'm going to give the activity after the lecture. And those that um, have not joined, the entire lecture cannot join or cannot do the respective activities. Okay? So that's clear how many wanna. Baka may mga magreklamo sa inyo later on. Ganun, that is very clear earlier. So this is our very first um, online lecture this week. Another offline lecture will be uploaded later on. So, hindi ko pa ina-upload yung offline lecture because I want to finish this online lecture with these remaining sections for these um, classes. Kayo na lang yung apat na section na natitira na hindi ko pa na-lecture on online this week. So, yung susunod na dito is our offline lectures. So, okay. Um, our course... This is the course outline. Actually, this is for the entire um, entire class already until finals. Dinibide ko na lang siya per subtopic. So, of course, we have to, you know, study the policy, the concepts, theories. Kasi dyan dapat nakasentro yung ating lecture, the theories of comparative policy. At iisa-isahin na lang natin yan sooner. Transnational crimes, comparative crimes, and the role of international law enforcement organizations. What are these different law enforcement organizations? One is the UN, police. Lagi ko nakakalimutan to include yung police dito. Apologies. So that's the UN police. Interpol, Asianapol, Europol, the ICC. In some of the modules that perhaps you have or yung mga umulit ng subject, Yung iba wala yung ICC. So, okay. Um, this is a new research for me as well, the International Criminal Court, to be included in this course outline. And of course, other international law enforcement organizations. Basta kakayanin nung time natin sa finals or maybe midterms, include natin yung mga um, iba. Okay? Kasi nung nilecture namin to nung summer, hindi ka siya yung time. So, kinat na namin yung iba. But for us, I think we have enough time to discuss all of this. So as we go along the lecture, nakikita ko yung comment box mga kapatid ha, maliwanag, baka um, merong blurry, baka I'm talking so fast, baka mahina yung aking boses, comment box lang, okay? Lagi kong tinitignan yung ating um, comment box. Hindi naman blurry, I think. Ayan, so let's go to the um, lecture proper. So intro to policy. We will not define first what is policy here because that is in the later parts. Let's go first to the basic features of this policy. So what are the three basic features ng policy that is still present up to this day? So policy style ng um, iba-ibang bansa ngayon, this is, some of these features are still present. So first, it does not always involve coercion. What does this mean? The policy is um, a style that is supposed to enforce the law that is uh, supposed to enforce the rules and regulations or to look after 
the um, example community or the people in the community and yung policing style dapat it does not always involve coercion or in Ilocano is kinarangas. Ang policing or yung pag enforce ng law hindi daw dapat nandun lagi yung um, kinarangas. That is the first basic feature. Present pa ba yan sa atin ngayon or hindi na? I let you decide soon. And then yung ating second feature, there's a crucial distinction between those people that is, that has actually taken oath to enforce policy or that they have taken oath to have that responsibility to enforce the policy style in a community or in a specific place. Yan yung pinaka-first na person. Sila yung mga binigyan ng batas ng responsibility. For example, yung mga policemen. Sila yung unang-unang binibigyan ng batas ng responsibility kasi nag-take oath sila, nag-promise sila sa batas that this is their responsibility. And then yung second is yung mga tao na hindi naman binigyan ng batas ng responsibility but they enforce also policy duties or they help in enforcing the law. Ayan, distinction yan, halimbawa yung mga tanod, hindi naman yan sumusumpa, correct, sa government, hindi sila nag-take oath sa government natin. Although, meron silang pinipirmahan sa Barangay Hall, for example, yun yung kanilang um, parang contract to the barangay. Pero hindi sila nag-take oath sa government. Therefore, yung government, hindi nila binibigyan ng specific na responsibility yung mga barangay tanod natin para maging police sa barangay. Correct? So, meron silang mga, merong distinction between sa dalawang yan. Hanggang ngayon, nakikita pa rin natin yan. Kahit nung olden times or yung early features or early styles of policy, ganyan din sila. May crucial distinction doon sa binigyan lang ng responsibility between naman doon sa hindi binigyan ng responsibility pero nag -e enforce pa rin ng batas or ng policy duties. So that is the second feature, this uh, distinction. And yung pangatlong feature is that policemen performs a lot of activities or a lot of duties, a lot of tasks. Hindi lang yung pagpupulis is um, enforcing the law or crime control or crime pre prevention. In the early days of policemen, isa sa mga trabaho din ng mga police is um, garbage disposal, firefighting, ganyan. In our days kasi ngayon, <clears throat> magkaiba or hindi man magkaiba actually, parang na-separate lang yung BFP dito sa PNP, correct? Yung BFP is the one responsible for firefighting while the PNP is more concentrated on crime control and crime prevention. Pero earlier, earlier in the days, um, lahat yan, trabaho lang ng mga police officers. Hindi nag-separate the BFP and the PNP during those times. So that is the um, basic feature. I three basic features ng ating policy. Remember that. Okay, so let's go to the history of policy. Sorry, I keep on burping. Anyway, um, for the books or for the record, nakalagay kasi history of policy. I like to call it timeline. It's easier to do a timeline than go back or read a lot of um, history books, di ba? <clears throat> but anyway, sa ating history of policy, merong tatlong era. In other books that I have read, merong apat na era. Pero usually kasi yung almost 80%, <clears throat> I think, of the books have only three eras. And for our discussion, we will tackle yung three eras lang. Yung pang fourth kasi is ilang books lang. So, hindi na natin i-include yung pang-apat na era dito sa history of policy. <clears throat> um, the era that dates back, this is according to research, that dates back, so yung pinakamatagal is this political era. Actually, political era is sometimes can be seen. Nakikita pa rin natin ngayon specifically. After discussion, siguro maiisip niyo kung bakit or kung papaano at kung saan napapractice itong political era na to. So in this political era, it started in the United States and it started in the 1800s. Um, this book, as I have read, yung till 1920s lang yung kanilang um, timeline. Pero in some books, hanggang um, early 1930s, napapractice yung political era. So do not confuse yourselves, 1800s hanggang 1830s ang kukunin natin para mas um, maliwanag. 
kakover na rin natin yung kinakover ng isa ibang books. 1800s to um, 1930s yung kukunin natin, yung kanilang timeline. And as I have said, this started in the United States. <clears throat> so during this era, um, as the name implies, political era, yung police during those times enforce the laws, enforce the rules and regulations not according to the law but according to the politicians that they serve. That is why it's called political era. So ang boss dito yung mga politicians natin. Um, kasi United States to nag-start. Let's take for example one state in the US, New York for example, one of the most famous states. Yung governor ng New York has all the right to hire policemen to patrol the city of New York. So wala nang civil service system or yung style of or the manner of hiring the policemen. Kung sino yung gusto ng politician na i-hire, sila yung mag enforce ng policy styles or ng rules and regulations. Yung um, politician din na yan, siya din yung pwedeng mag-fire. Siya din yung pwedeng mag-manage ng lahat ng administrative and um, other relations ng kapulisan during those times. And in turn naman, these policemen, um, they have to keep their oath they have to keep their allegiance to that uh, specific policeman. Kung ano lang yung kagustuhan ng uh, political na yan, politician, hindi policeman, sorry. Kung ano lang yung kagustuhan ng politician na yan, yun lang ang masusunod. Ayan. So it is not um, actually for the people, but it is for the boss, quote-unquote. So yung mga officers dyan, they were selected for political service. Pwede sila lang mag... Um, what do you call this? Mag-render ng service as according lang sa gusto nung politician na yun. Yes. During those eras also, yung uh, police officer is a very, very good job. Si old, old, olden times pa to. So pag police ka, astig ka. Pero yun nga, hindi siya ganun kaganda yung um, kapulisan because it only serves a certain um, person, a certain politician for that matter. This is during this time, the political era. And, and also, yung uh, policemen during this era, they only do foot patrol. I think you have discussed foot patrol earlier in your other subjects. But anyhow, foot patrol lang yung ginagamit nila. And um, during this era, the foot patrol is very nice way of communicating with the community. Because during the foot patrol, you can go to the community. Uraite kasulina Kasulina kan iti community, they can go sa foot patrol. So yun naman yung kinaganda ng foot patrol. That's the uh, positive side of this foot patrol. They And they have also intimate relationships with the people in the community because they know the community so well. And also in foot patrol, this is um, one of the best to gather intelligence kasi nakikita mo face-to-face -face yung uh, community nag and during these times, nakikita nila kung sino yung bagong mukha, bagong salta sa community. They would also know, the policemen during this time, they would also know if a crime is happening or a crime just happened in this part of the community or that they can observe this community on a daily basis because they are on uh, foot patrol. So lagi nilang nakikita kung sino yung mga bago, baka may bagong immigrant, Kung dito sa place na to is rampant yung um, pickpocketing, dito sa area na to is rampant yung um, gambling, ganyan. So nakikita lahat yan ng mga police officers on foot patrol. And also during this era, political era, limited lang yung supervision ng mga policemen. So sabi ko nga, isang boss lang yung kanilang sineserve. It is the policeman, uh, it's the politician. Kanina pa ako policeman ng policeman. I mean, it's the politician that they serve. So it is at the discretion of that politician to um, supervise. So minsan, busy yung politician, hindi niya masyadong nasusupervise yung mga kapulisan. In turn, itong mga pulis na to, sometimes they allow crimes to happen in those areas that they patrol. Like for example, gambling. Inaalaw nila yung gambling dun sa kanilang place. You know why? Kasi meron silang um, proceeds or... What do you call this when you play the cards? Um, 
I forgot. It's tong. Correct? Yan. So, tong. Meron silang mga ganun na nakukuha. These policemen from the community. Kaya inaalaw nila yan. Ayan. Pickpocketers. Yung mga nandurukot. Inaalaw din yan ng ibang mga kapulisan. Kasi nga hindi sila masyadong nasusupervise ng politician. So, bakit nila inaalaw yung um, pickpocketing? Because meron din silang nakukuha. Meron silang share from those um, crimes. Ganun. So, yan yung style ng um, policing nung mga policemen during this political era. Yan, summarize natin. Yan, wala pa ako nakikita sa comment box na nagsasabi, mabilis ako magsalita. Basta comment nyo lang, like for example, meron kayong hindi naintindihan, and comment again. So, summarize natin, ayan, yung um, year na to, 1800s to 1930s. It is to be safe kasi magkakaiba yung ibang um, ideas ng ibang books. Okay, that's the year again. 1800s to 1930s. Yung police forces during this time, we can characterize them by broad social service. Gaya nung sinabi ko kanina, meron silang intimate relationship with the community and that they can go anywhere in the community through foot patrol. Yan. Decentralized ang organization. Bakit? Kasi iisa lang yung boss nila. So wala silang mga subdivisions. It's just the politicians yung boss nila. So, from the politician, yan, bagsak ka agad yung rules and regulations, bahala na kayong mag-enforce. Ganyan. So, they do not do reporting to a certain boss. Basta pinakawalan lang sila sa community. They do the foot patrol and that's it. So, decentralized ang police organization. And then, extensive use of foot patrols, uh, we have mentioned. Yung spoil system na ito is a system in the um, hiring of the police people. You see, there were there was no civil service system or there were no guidelines. There were no specific trainings even for our police officers during those times. So kung sino lang yung gusto ng um, politician, sila lang. Ganyan. Kung sino yung malapit kay mayor, malakas kay mayor, sila lang. Ganyan. And of course, African American were discriminated against. This discrimination is still rampant until now, to be honest. Kaya nga meron yung you know, Black Lives Matter and this and that. But during those times also, yung mga African-American officers, the black, quote-unquote, officers were discriminated against or nakahiwalay sila sa mga white officers. So meron yung term dito na um, black officers and white officers during those times. Yung mga black officers, they were not really allowed to do a lot of um, policing service during these times. And of course, women officers, until now naman, meron pa rin yung discrimination na ganito. Women officers during those times were not allowed to do police functions such as foot patrol. Yan, hindi sila para sa crime prevention or crime control kung meron man. Uh, office work lang sila or yung mga ibang work lang that were specified for women. Ganun. So that is the political era. Um, summary ng political era. That is the first era in the history of um, policing. Let the time check ako lagi. 131 in the house. Okay. So this is the second um, era. Some books call it professional era. Some books call it reform era. And this is just the same. Hindi ko to nakita earlier. So medyo in-include in ko lang. Kasi reform era lang yung nasa um, kariniwang ginagamit nating books or ginagamit namin books. And then through research, parehas sila dito sa professional era. Ngayon so nag-end na yung political era. You see, yung timeline natin kanina hanggang 1930s lang, correct? Yung political eras kasi yun yung sinabi sa books. Pero yung political era hindi naman kaagad nawala during the 1930s. So medyo dahan-dahan siyang nawala. Yung end na noon makikita na lang nung 1970s. So yan, totally siguro papawala na yan. In the United States, I think because 1970s is the start of political era here in the Philippines. If you do not uh, you know, if you do not disagree with me, it's the start of political era in the Philippines because of the Marcos regime. But that's another story. But anyhow, um, kin ang timeline kasi na kinuha natin is kung saan nagsimula ang policy in the United States. So this is what we're going to follow. So nag -e end na yung political era in the early 1970s. Yung policy naman sa, sa United States nagsisimula ng ma-reform. Kaya siya naging reform era. Tapos nagkakaroon na ng professionalism. Kaya din siya tinawag na professional era. Ganyan. So during this era, hindi na nila pinapractice yung quote-unquote political style. 
Ganyan. Kapag sabi kong quote and quote mga kapatid, ha, baka ano ni magbaga na quote and quote dito na Mr. Detoy oh, mabasa yo Detoy professional era. Yan oh yung quotation marks na yan. Kapag sinasabi kong quote and quote, you imagine what I'm saying as this one, okay? It has a quotation marks on both ends. Ayan. So pag sabing quote and quote politicians, ayan. So, during this era, reform era, hindi na masyadong pinapractice yung style nung uh, political era that you have to serve a certain politician only. Ayan. So, nare-reform na, nagiging professional na sila. Meron na silang ser civil service system. Ito na yung uh, style or manner of hiring or firing of officers. Haanan nga basta-basta nga agala ni Mayor Tipulis na. Haanan nga basta-basta nga agala ni Governor Itikapulisan na. Ganun. So, meron na silang sinusunod na rules and regulations. Uh, meron na silang standards, minimum standards of or system on how or who to hire. Ganun. And during these times also, medyo nawawala na yung discrimination pa konti-konti. So, kung uh, black ka man, white ka man, ano man ang kulay mo, you can undergo through the hiring process of the uh, um, specific place. Well, let's take one, one example again. Uh, um, one state in the United States. Ano ba yung favorite ninyong state? Yeah, so, California Latin. Anyway, in California, for example, meron na silang civil service system na nagsasabi na we can hire both black and white police officers or women officers for that matter. So, wala nang discrimination. Ganyan. And they do not really work for a political person, pero they still like do escorts, ganyan sa mga politicians, pero hindi na sila nag-work for that specific person. Um, only. And also, marami nang na-include dito sa reform era. Like, for example, yung training ng police officers, yung academic institution ng police officers, ganyan. I'm not sure if during this era when West Point, if you are familiar with West Point Academy, one of the best, um, you know, one of the best uh, training centers for law enforcers, for military people alike. So baka dito during this time na na, -enfor uh, na na itatag yung West Point Academy or yeah, I'll research on that later on I forgot. And during this year also a lot of police officers were introduced into um, managing. So nagkakaroon na sila ng subdivisions. Uh, for example, yung si general i-command na yung ganito na um, police precinct or police unit. Hindi na sila diretso sa iisang uh, leader lang. And also during these times, marami na rin police organizations. Ano nga ba yung silbi ng mga org organizations na yan? Bakit kailangan meron? Take for example na lang sa inyo, yung organization ninyo for, per section. You have class officers per section and that stands are, as your organization, di ba? Backbone ng class nyo yan. So like for example, you have issues regarding classes, regarding schedules. Pwedeng doon kayo sa mga officers ninyo um, nagre-rely or nagsasabi. And then yung nagre-represent sa inyo na officers, sila yung nakikiusap sa school or sa mga advisors, correct? Ganyan din yung organizations ng police officers during these times. So dyan, na binubuo na nila ngayon yung International Association of Chiefs of Police. So meron na silang kanya-kanyang chief of police na nagre-represent sa buong unit. Hindi kagaya earlier, compare ko, compare, kinocompare ko lagi ha. They just refer, report to the um, governor or to the mayor. Parang nai-imagine nyo, pag yung political era pa rin, pa rin natin ngayon, lahat ng mga police nyo nagre-report lang kay Governor Matthew. Parang ganun. Anyhow, and also, yung reform era, kasi nga reform, nagkakaroon na ng changes, nagkakaroon na ng pagbabago, yung patrol car was also introduced. So, police officers no longer have to do the rigorous foot patrol. Ay, nakakapagod yung foot patrol. Ayan. So, we tried that during our internship, but anyhow. Yung bag ko mano, kasla, ilokos norte, nga flat lang, tipag pagdaan mabalin. Ay, dito sa amin sa Cordilleras, bulubundukin. Mag foot patrol ka, OMG. But anyhow, uh, police cars were introduced during these times. And also, yung police cars, meron na si, syempre yung radios, yung kanilang police cars. I'm sure naman, uh, at least one or two nakapanood ko ng ganito. Hollywood movies. Kasi wala naman sa local movies yung ganito radio car. But uh, radio car were introduced in this manner. Kapag nagpapatrol nag yung mga kapulisan dito is, makikita agad yung police car. Uh, 
na napag-aralan nyo na ba na yung isa sa mga advantages ng police car is that um, they are visible kaagad. Makikita kaagad sila ng mga tao. Inconspicuous silang nandyan kaagad. Nakikita mo silang, kapag nakita mo yung police car, ops, there's the presence of the police. Kapag nakita mo rin yung blinker na red and blue, ops, it's the presence of the police. So yung radio car na yan, it represents mobility. So they can go anywhere faster than the foot patrol. And it also represents power. Why is, does it represent power? Diba? Nagiging reform, nare-reform na nga, nasa reform era na nga, bakit power? It only means na um, the police has the ability to do this or to um, fight against crimes better with the police car. Yan. Conspicuous presence, yung sabi ko kanina, kita mo ka agad. Control of officers. Yung mga, mga officers kasi na nasa foot patrol, pwede silang pumasok na lang sa area mo or sa bahay mo or sa compound mo anytime. Kapag this time naman is not, meron pa rin distance between the citizens and the police officers. Hindi na kagaya dati na, you know, intimate, very intimate. They can just go to you, talk to you, ganyan. This time, hindi ganon. And of course, faster yung response time kapag may crime. May imagine mo ang layo nung, um, uh, for example lang naman to. Example ko lang ha yung distance. Di ko sinasabing ganito yung mga police officers. Lawag to um, Bakara. Correct? Bakara. Yeah, lawag to Bakara. Or Bakara to Pasukin kasi yun yung familiar ko na distance. Yung Bakara to Pasukin yung pinangyarihan ng crime. Tapos naka-foot patrol kayo, di ba? Tinakbo kasi namin before that one. Mga athletes ng Wushu ng Ilocos Norte. From Bakara to the border of Pasukin, that was really very far. Ma-imagine mo magpo-foot patrol sila, mag-respond sila ng crime hanggang dun. Di ba? So, yung um, police cars, radio cars, it gave them um, smaller time to respond to crimes. Ganyan. Yung meron lang silang parang backlog or parang merong something that the community thought of as a bad quote-unquote culture noong pagkakaroon ng police cars. Kasi nagkaroon na nung culture na um, it's us versus them. Nakita nyo ba? Oops. Ayan. So this one. It's us versus them. Etong um, connotation na to is that yung mga police officers, parang nadidistance na nila yung kanilang sarili. Sarili between the police officers and the people. Kaya nagiging us versus them yung nangyayari. Parang yung police officers, hindi na sila ganun ka-close sa atin na mga people. Hindi na sila ganun ka-intimate sa atin. Hindi na nila tayo naaalagaan as... Um, they used to during the um, political era. So, subculture lang naman ito. It's not um, everybody. It's just a few of those people that, you know, perhaps I think they refuse to accept yung um, changes. Ganyan naman tayo lagi. Pag may change, may question, ganyan. So, ganito yung mga questions nila dati. During this uh, professional or reform era, yung mga tao is parang hindi na sila masyadong uh, close up police at ito na yung inisip nila. Oops, these policemen are against us. Yeah. So that's just the subculture or the backlog. Yan yung parang pangit during this professional era. Kung maalala nyo sa ating political era earlier, yung pangit doon is yung um, uh, yung foot patrol is nakakapagod. Ganun. Yung pangit doon, actually marami yung pangit doon. Tapos yung um, kinaganda lang is intimate sila sa kanilang community. While in this reform era, kabaliktaran, hindi naman na-intimate yung mga police sa um, community or to the people of the uh, community. Yun. And during these times, the police, they protect the status quo of the um, uh, of the community or status quo of the country. Ibig sabihin pag status quo, kung ano yung present, kung ano yung present na kalagayan ng country. During these times, during the reform era, yung United States was in war with Vietnam War and they have a lot of war, like the Afghan War that has recently ended. Are you aware of that? That the United States Army or the Philippine military of the United States just left Afghanistan. They have been in war with Afghanistan for you know, time immemorial. Hindi pa tayo pinanganak or baka hindi pa pinanganak yung mga parents natin. They're already at war with Afghanistan, with Vietnam. They have a lot of civil wars going on in Europe during these times. And the police officers, they stand by this one. 
when they say protectors of status quo, they stand by the status quo of the country because we're talking about the United States here, okay? Yan. So, ang status quo, like, for example lang ng status quo, baka masyado ako mabilis mag-explain. Yung status quo ng Pilipinas ngayon, nasa at war tayo with drugs. That is one of the status quo, di ba? We are at war with drugs. And number two is, we are at war with everyone else except China. Yan. Ay, baka sabihin nyo, ano, anti-Duterte ako. Hindi ako anti-Duterte, pero hindi rin ako pro. Ganyan. Actually, I don't vote. I don't care with the politicians, but, you know, as the ta status quo lang, for example, yan yung status quo natin. So, yan din yung status quo before, during this era. Kung ano yung status quo, yun yung in-implement ng police. Yun yung sinusundan ng police. Ba, kahit ngayon naman eh, kung ano yung status quo ni President, we have to fight against, uh, you have to, we have to go to war against drugs. Yan. So, every police officer are at war, di ba, against drugs. Ganyan. So, yan yung um, style ng mga kapulisan uh, before that one. So halimbawa may mga uh, may mga protests ganyan yung police officer automatic frontliners din sila kahit ngayon naman yan uh, very visible yan So before during those times also rampant din yung college protests I went there mga kapatid you're just in second year and you started college during the pandemic so siguro hindi niyo pa na try yung mga ganito yung college protests In my college time I used to enjoy college protests lalo na yung no to tuition fee increase, mga ganon. Sobrang magtaas kasi ng tuition fee increase ang UC dati. My school, my, uh, University of the Cordilleras, grabe kami magtaas ng tuition fee, ganyan. So, all, automatic yan, mayroon kami mga college protests. At ang nagpa-frontline against us before were the police officers, ganyan. So, meron sa kanila yung shield and the batons, ganyan. So, during these times, ganun din sila, yung mga police officers during the reform era. Kasi meron pa rin yung mga tao na hindi open sa idea of the professional era or reform era, kaya sila nagpo-protest, perhaps. And the police are the front line against this one. Ganyan. <clears throat> and also during this reform era, nag-bloom nag yung idea, yung community policing. So hindi pa man natatapos yung ating professional era or reform era, meron na yung idea ng community policing. So ano naman yung community policing? Ito yung susunod na era after this one. is the third era. So, but before we go to that third era, yan, insert ko lang yung idea na to ha. Yung um, reform era kasi, e, gusto niyang palitan yung dalawang areas lang. Kaya siya naging reform or professional era. Yung police brutality during this political era, rampant yan. Kasi nga, di ba, yung police officers, they go to the community, they uh, are intimate with the community, so they often do or they often conduct this police brutality yan so yan gustong palitan niya ng reform era kaya nagkaroon ng professionalism sa mga policemen and of course the corrupt politicians so gusto nilang ipalitan yan sa reform era so yan lang yung dalawang sentro ng reform era okay so we go to the third one which is the community policing na sinabi ko nga earlier noong during ng reform era is iniisip na nila ito or meron silang idea about this community uh, about this community policy era. So gusto ba nilang um, parang palitan ulit or dagdagan yung mga kaisipan ng um, reform era or professional era. So ano naman yung community policy era? This is the policing style which is practiced until now by the um, police officers. <clears throat> so, any philosophy or what is the idea behind the community policing era? Ganyan. So, marami yung definitions actually ito, and it may vary. Or magkakaiba-iba according to um, specific states ng US. And nung nag-spread na ito worldwide, um, nagkaroon na ng sarisariling version ang iba't ibang country. Pero gawin lang natin um, a centralized, kunin natin yung iisang idea or yung gist, the summary of what really community policy era is. Ganyan. So, mga factors ng um, community policy era, ayan. So, meron na silang um, reduction of crime. There is a department in the police um, force that is specified for reducing crime, to reduce fear perhaps among people, um, to reduce disorder, tap de gulo, maiwasan, ganyan. And of course, para sa members ng community, matanggal na nila yung us versus them. Remember? 
during the reform era, nagkaroon ng us versus them, nakaisipan yung mga tao, gusto ng community policy era na tanggalin yung kaisipan na yun um, ng mga tao. Parang ibalik lang yung intimacy nung um, relationship between the police forces and the people of the community. So yan, parang mas maging friendlier or magiging um, kunin natin yung motto ng ating PNP, ah, for example, like civilian and character. National in scope, civilian and character. So gusto ng community policy era na ganun yung enforce nila na uh, style of policy during this community policy era. Makikita nyo naman siguro sa pangalan pa lang. Community policy era. So they still patrol the community, they still police the community. However, it is um, already for the benefit or mostly for the um, purposes of uh, or for the interest of the people of the community. Na, no longer na sa police force lang and no longer na nanggagaling lang yung utos from the um, higher ups. It has to come also from the community. So in include nila yung um, kaisipan ng community during this community policy era. Summarize ka agad natin. So 1980s. So ang ang if you remember yung balikan natin. Wait lang ha. Ayan. So yung ating uh, reform era, ano ba sana ba? Yun? Yung ating reform era nag-start daw siya nung mga um, late 30s. Pero force uh, early 30s siya nag-start, pero full force siyang nag-start noong 70s. Tapos, dumating naman yung ating um, community era 80s. So, very short-lived lang yung ating reform era. Nag-middle era lang talaga siya. Parang bridge lang siya between the political and the community era. Yung ating reform era. So, mga more or less 10 years lang yung reform era. During this 1980s na community era, hanggang ngayon to present, ito yung kanyang summary. So, yung ating police force, Yung authority is coming from the community support. Yan yung sinasabi ko kanina. Yung batas ng pag enforce ng law did not just come from the police officers. It has come from the people. Yan yan. So yung law and professionalism din na standard, hindi lang basta na draft yan or nagawa yan from the police officers. It also came from the community. Yan. And dumami na yung services ng uh, kapulisan. So, crime control is one of their main um, services dito sa community era. Tapos, yung um, decentralized organization na Manila is, uh, kasi nung political era decentralized, correct? Iisa lang yung boss, tapos kanya-kanya ng um, salpak nung kanilang mga rules and regulations. Sa decentralized organization natin, usually nakikita natin ito sa mga patrol officers. Yung mga pumupunta sa... How do you term again? Yung super barrios, ganyan. Sulilok nga lugar. Sila usually yung sinasabing decentralized because they do not really report daily to a, a certain specific boss or chief. And then intimacy with the community. Again, yan, binabalik yan from the political era. Although may changes na, hindi na kagaya noon na intimate nga sila sa community, pero they allow crimes to happen. In this, hindi na. They, they will try to, you know, put the relationship back into intimacy pero meron na yung control ng crime control they do not really allow like the gambling, the pickpocketing minsan pa nga yung intimacy with the community pag nagpapatrol yung mga kapulisan they raid gambling places ganyan. I haven't heard of anything like this in Ilocos Norte but in here there are a lot of gambling places sa city of Baguio maraming gambling places in which yung mga police officers nire-raid nila lagi sa kanilang pagpapatrol ganyan Ulitin ko ulit tayo mga nagko-comment ng pangalan diyan na walang section makamu kayo. Hangko nga i-check tinagnaga nyo. Ja birbiro ko ta section nyo. Parigata na kayo mang biro ko section nyo ah. Mm. Nakalagay diyan, ayan. Tingnan okay, ko pa pala dapat tinanggal yan. But anyhow, mga hindi nakalagay ng section. That is the summary of our community era. Nididistract ako. <laughs> yan yung summary ng ating um community era. Okay? So yeah, let's take a look from the community era ha. Mag-start tayo sa community era. Tignan nga natin yung daily life of a police officer. Actually, this daily life of a police officer, marami nang hindi pa naka-include dito. Pero ito lang yung um, nakikita natin usually. So yeah, they patrol areas by car, motorcycle, horse, or on foot. Hindi kasi na-include dito yung bicycle patrol. Pero meron ng bicycle patrol din ngayon, correct? So yes, uh, in our place, horse patrol is common. 
kasi may mga horses dito. Ayan, so, so, you know, car patrol, motorcycle patrol is very, ano naman yun, very modern. So that is uh, seen everywhere, kahit sa inyong mga places. Uray pa itay, ada yung nga lugar ti Ilocos Norte. As far as Adams, when we went to Adams, yan, may nakita naman ako yung mga ganyan. Naka, actually, hinatid pa nga kami ng isang police mobile sa Adams, ganyan, nung nagpunta kami. But, and then they also direct traffic. Normal yan. Lalo na sa mga salawag, I think. Nakita ko to. Pero, I haven't seen this in other parts. San Nicolas, parang hindi ko nakita masyado to eh. Yung directing traffic. Saan ka nga naman mag-direct ng traffic pag wala namang masyadong sasakyan, di ba? Pero, lawag, ayan. Direct traffic. Direct traffic. And pag may special event, yan. Actually, dito sa Baguio, pag dumarating dito si Senator Amy Marcos, Special event sa amin yun eh. Pero pag sa Ilocos Norte, pag dumating si Senator Amy Marcos, normal event na lang yan. Ganon. So yan, maraming police officers na nagdadirect ng traffic. Ganyan. Kapag may mga um, traffic accidents, halimbawa, dinadirect din nila. And of course, yung police officers, they always assist in this investigation of crimes or sa crime scene investigation. Different lang ito mga kapatid ha. Meron kasi yung ibang tao na, like for example, may nangyaring crime. Uh, banggahan or barilan, ganyan. Tapos may mga uh, tinamaan, ganun. May mga tao kasi na nagko-comment na, anama, dito yung polis, di na pa yung lang uh, um, tulungan or di na pa yung lang, uh, um, you know, i-assess ka agad yung crime scene or like that. Hindi kasi, meron kasi yung specific na trabaho na hindi pwedeng galawin kahit police officer ka ba. Your first um, job there is to um, go there and check if that person is still alive or not. Or it he or she needs immediate medical Um, ganito. Pero pag nakita ng police na yan, ispatay na, hindi niya pwedeng galawin kaagad yung crime scene. The first he or she can do is to cordon the crime scene. And then the crime scene investigators, may specific na crime scene investigators, they will do now the crime scene investigation. Okay? So, yung trabaho ng police officer dyan is sinabi ko nga, i-check kaagad. Kung may buhay pa, call ng ambulance. Pero hindi siya po pwedeng um, kunin yung tao at ilagay kung saan. Ganun. Pwede siyang mag-first aid. There is a difference. Kapag nakikita yung mga ganyang mga cases, yung mga normal police officers na nandyan, na nagpapatrol, hindi ka agad nila pwedeng galawin yung crime scene. Lalo na pagpatay na yung tao. Ganun. So they just assist. Na-assist lang nila. Ganyan. And they help also in transport of prisoners. Ganyan. Kapag maililipat na preso, halimbawa from the local city jail or local provincial jail, pupunta ng munti. Pwede lang din sila mag-serve ng warrant of arrest, search warrants, subpoenas, ganyan. So, ganyan yung mga daily life ng police officer. Um, they sound boring, pero sometimes exciting. Or or they sound so busy, but sometimes it's not. You know? Actually, sometimes it's not. Hindi masyado. Lalo na pag maraming polis dyan, hindi masyadong busy ang mga kapulisan. Ganyan. Eto na naman ako. But anyhow, yan, baka in other books, baka may mga binabasa kayong mga books or may mga um, nare-research kayo kasi, you know, sa panahon nyo ngayon, kailangan nyo mag-research lagi. Ito yung history. Ancient policing or during the political era. Medieval policing or during the professional or reform era. And then, early modern policing is the community policing era. Yan, baka may nababasa kayong iba. Ha? I came across this one while on research kasi parang, bakit may iba? yung history or timeline ng policy. Pero this is almost the same. Yung karamihan kasi na ito is Europe naman. Nag-base tayo sa United States. Correct? So yun, yung ating eras. Pero ito, sa Europe ito uh, usually nangyari. But it's almost the same, the ideas. Meron lang konting-konti na specifics, pero it's not really, parang hindi siya masyadong nakaka-affect sa ideas ng policy styles. Ganyan. So, I think the next on this one is already activity. Ah, bayan. Sex, uh, sections, blah, blah, blah naman yun. So, ayan mga kapatid, ito yung ating, uh, dito mag-end yung ating lecture about the history of policy. History pa lang yun, pero I think I have taken almost an hour to explain those ones. Ayan. Uh, before I give you your activity, mga kapatid, please um, hit on the comment box. Baka meron kayong questions, meron kayong hindi na intindihan sa ating lecture. Now is the time for you to ask questions. Han kayo nagbabay nga agdamag, mga kapatid? Baka, oh, baka yung bagatik lang, sumik ko nga, makawawat. It's not. Actually, when you ask, it's not only, uh, it's for yourself naman. That is for your mental health, okay? 
baka pa pan panunutom ka din gayam naawatan nagbabain ka lang ang damag hindi nakakayang magtanong kasi iba-iba rin tayo ng range ng pagkakaintindi iba-iba tayo ng yung alam niyo yun yung pagkabilis nating ma-absorb yung isang topic or isang lesson or baka naman salita ako ng salita hindi niyo pala naiintindihan yung term ko ganoon questions mga kapatid hit the comment box before i give you your activity for today Ayun, may iba dyan ha. Nag-join lang after ng uh, mbala kayo. Ay, naka-record to sa akin. So, nakikita ko yung mga nag-join. Just, uh, you know, just before I start the official class. Tsaka pagpapatapos na. Nakikita ko yan. You have questions, mga kapatid, seconders? Cream, A, B, C, and I. So, A, B, C, and I. Bakit may taga 2K dito? Ah, din ko. Ikaw ba yung hindi nakapag-join last time? This is supposed to be ABC. Ay, ah, bakit may 2D? May 2D akong nakita and 2K. Bakit kayo nakajoin dito, mga kapatid? And 2F. Hindi kayo nakajoin ba earlier? Ayan, so habang nag-check ako ng mga sections, nag-aantay ako ng questions. While I check your sections, nag-aantay ako ng questions. Do you have questions, mga kapatid? Any questions? Violent reaction for that matter? May unclear ba? Hang kayo nagbaba, yung tadyak agungot na magdamag kayo. Huwag lang kayo maglalatin ha. Pag sinabi kong latin yung bad words, may maglatin lang sa inyo automatic fail ka sa finals. See you next time. Ganun. Huwag lang kayo maglalatin sa klase ko. Unless, ako yung naglatin una sa'yo. Ayan. Do you know how it feels like, you know, talking to, you know, talking to the screen of my laptop tapos wala akong, wala, walang nagre-reply, ganun. Wala ba? Wala ba kayong tanong? Or wala ba kayong itatanong tungkol sa klase natin, tungkol sa lesson natin, ganyan. It feels funny, it's very quiet here that I'm, you know, I'm expecting questions as if I'm expecting to hear you ask the questions. But anyhow, walang question. I'll give you 30 seconds and then I'll give you your activity. Yung takaibang sections nga na hindi section A, B, C, and I na nag-join dito, um, send kayo ng message sa inyong mga class presidents. Why are you in this, um, you know, lecture? Because it's different activity for you. Your um, supposed, um, what do you call this, schedule was last Monday. And thank you sa mga nag-reply nag na wala silang question. Yung mga taga-section 2K and D, last Monday ang lecture natin. So, iba yung activity ninyo mga kapatid. Na baka mai, mainayon nga dito activity na dito ito aramidan nyo. It's different. It's a different point system also. So, yung susunod na... Um, uh, ayan, thank you for the feedback. Salamat at naiintindihan. Ganun. Sometimes I feel like I, I talk so fast. Especially when I'm excited to, you know, Share the lecture, ganyan. Anyhow, yung activity dito, sinasabi ko, ha, sections A, B, C, and I lang ang gagawa nito. Kasi iba yung, section, iba yung activity ng ibang sections. Okay? Na, nakapag, na napag-lecturean ko. Iba yung EFG na section, iba yung DH, J, K, and L. Iba yung kanilang activity. Ha? Ayan. So, since walang question, sabi ng inyong ibang classmates, siguro yung iba dyan ko, di na pwede ito, the activity. <laughs> Joke lang, ha? Ayan. So, sections. Ugh. Sections A, B, C, and I. This is your activity. So, today is September 10. Your um, activity is due today. Ayoko ng deadline. Pag sinasabi nyo, deadline. Deadline kasi that's the end. It's a deadline. It's a due date. Ang due date natin is today also at 6 p.m. Mamayang alas 6. Pero han nyo man ang naurayan ti alas 6. Sakay agi sub-submit. Sakay agi mes-message to manan. Ma'am, nagrigat signal. Ma'am, awang kuryente. Ma'am, awan internet. Nagawan itay alas 6. Han nyo nga urayan ti alas 6 kakabsat. Tap no i-submit ko pa yun na dito nga activity. If you can do it now after the lecture, do it now. Ah, pupunta ako sa mga FB groups natin. Gagawa ako ng, um, it's a column or it's a picture. 
Uh, blurred yung screen. Kapag nagbo-blur yung screen niyo mga kapatid, yan. So, may tatlong dot dito sa ating ano, yan o, oh, um, upper upper right. Kapag kaharap niyo yung screen niyo, meron tayong tatlong dots diyan. Pindot niyo yan. Um, taasan niyo lang yung HD o yung definition ng inyong mga screens. O itap niyo ulit yung mga screen. Ayan. So, uh, usually pag nagbo-blurry kasi internet connection yan. Wait lang ha. Ayan. Sabihin niyo na, sabihin niyo kung blurred pa. Wait, ginagalaw ko kasi yung screen kasi kaya ata nagbo-blurry. Anyhow, wait a minute. Lakihan ko lang konti para ano. Actually, you ha you have to um do a screenshots on this for a moment lang, for a moment. Lakihan ko lang konti yung ating um Oo. Ayan. Wait lang, balik ko lang sa dati ha. Ginlo ko pa eh. Yan. So, but anyhow, yung instruction natin dito is that um, write your outputs on yellow paper. Ma'am, oray ma, ba mabaling ko po ang ban at ang tumanan tiag message kanya kun. Na minsan, jack sung bata, jack pa isising. Basta clean sheet of paper. Pero usually, mas, magali ka, mas madali kasi sa yellow paper. Di na kayo kailangan maglinya-linya sa yellow paper. Okay? I-fold yun lang sa papel yun, naka-table na kayo. But anyhow, clean sheet of paper. Just upload it. Take a picture. Clear picture. May mga nakita pa rin ako sa mga iba na activities natin na hindi clear yung inyong mga um, outputs. It's not my job to make it clear. Remember that. It's my job to read it and grade it according to your output. But it's not It's not my job to make it clear. Uray ka sa nung panang padakpal ko tayo na duma ko talaga nga blurred. So it's your responsibility to make it clear or uh, upload a clear copy of your activity. Okay? So, 10 po, ah, 10 points. 30 points ito. Ang due date natin, mamayang hapon, 6 p.m. Makita yun, ma, makita yun? Madi, 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 blurred? Screenshot yun, mga kapatid, dito, 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 arami din yun, right after. Yung mga walang class dyan, gawin nyo na. May mga ibang sections na, walang class eh, ngayong Friday. So, may mga klase, gawin nyo na lang mamaya. But submission of this one is 6 p.m. this afternoon. So, number one, which of the three eras do you think has the best in terms of policy? Compare, contrast. Okay, the best the best way to explain on why you chose that era. For example, ang napili nyo, alam ko naman na maraming pipili ng community policy era. Diba? <laughs> Usually, an answer. But anyhow, um, explain why. Uh, three sentences na um, complete is already good. So, which era? Halimbawa, community policy era yung pili nyo. Why? Uh, you have to explain, convince me that you know this one. Huwag nyo lang ilagay yung mga napag-aralan nyo na kasi eto ano, meron na uh, nakalagay dun sa history na ano, nagbabago na sila. It's not that. That is not the idea on why you think that is not your idea. Ganyan. So, you have to compare and contrast. Uh, uh, compare nyo lang yung pinili nyo dun sa other two eras. Para mas madali yung ating, um, you know, explanation. And of course, yung ating second number two is according to the lecture, create a comparative table. Iba sana yung papagawa ko, pero uh, I'd like to see how you can compare yung ating mga eras. Time period. Hmm. Hanyo mga nang ikarga de jay year laong uh, 1800s to 1930s, halimbawa. Tapos na pang kaiti professional eras ko, 1930s to kastoy laong. You have to explain why it started in 1970s and it did not start in 1930s. Kasi dry. Okay? Characteristics. Ano yung outstanding characteristics nung um, political era or main idea? Ano yung focus nung political era? Magkaiba yan ha, yung characteristics at focus. Para lang silang parehas pero magkaiba. Ano yung characteristics nung political era? Ganyan. Ano yung focus ng political era? Sabihin ko na ha, for example, focus ng political era is policemen serves the politicians, certain politicians. Ano naman yung characteristics ng policy nila? Ganyan. Ano yung problems? Ito, madali lang to. I think, the problems. And crime control styles. How do they control crimes during the political era to that of the professional era? Ito, comparison to ha. Hindi nyo lang nilalagay yung mga um, hinihingi na to. Okay, comparison to, parang kinocompare nyo yung tatlo. Ayan. So, maliwanag yung ating um, activity. You have questions regarding this activity. Alagdamag kayon. 
Diyan, again, 30 p.m. damdama ang about this activity. Damag kayo, nadadamagan niyo about this activity. 30 seconds to ask me a question. Awan <laughs> damagan niyo ang question. Awan. Ulitin ko yung mga ano, hindi na na, hindi ba yung nakapag-attend ng ating entire without, you know. Basta ganun. Hindi sila pwedeng um, mag-join sa ating activity. Ha? Hindi ka pwedeng tingin, tingin, papanoorin na lang, ay hindi tatanungin lang sa mga classmate nyo, tapos mag-join na lang kayo ng activity later on. Sana ako. O nan, wala lang question sa iba mga classmates nyo. Yung isa iba, I presume, pag wala kayong comment, wala kayong question, Okay. That is uh, already, um, you know, assumed. Ha? Pag wala kayong comment, wala kayong question na intindihan. So once again, I'll give you last 10 seconds to do a screenshot of this one. We will end our lecture here. Ang susunod na dito is an offline discussion. Yan. So pwede ko nang i-upload yung ating offline discussion. Hindi ko pa ina-upload kasi hindi pa tapos yung ito, online live discussion ng inyong mga sections. Kayo na lang yung apat na natirang section na live online discussion. So, sunod dito, upload ko probably later this afternoon or tomorrow morning is your offline discussion. So, activity 2 is already in here. So, yan. Wala na kayong questions, mga kapatid. Good morning to everyone. Thank you for um, um lecture this morning. Pwede Tagalog panag-explain Yes, mga kapatid. As long as it's clear na mababasa ko. Ha? Kasi hindi naman tayo lahat, like, um, accepted ko naman yan yung kahit mga fourth years nga na sudyante ko, they are not really well-versed naman pag naging English. Although nag-try hard talaga sila. It's okay. Filipino is okay. When you're explaining your, um, what do you call this? When you're explaining your activities. Huwag namang sampung pages, ha, na Filipino. Actually, it's not Tagalog, it's Filipino. But anyhow, Tagalog is accepted. Huwag namang sampung pages, ganyan. Ayan. Questions pa? Wait, bakit yun? Anyhow. Ayan. Do you have other questions? Aside from those? Awanin yung question nyo, kamsat ka, mapangkay sa agluton, baka eh, banda kayo din ang nanang yung agluton, mga kapatid. Okay, thank you also for joining this lecture this uh, morning. And 6 p.m. today, no extensions, please, yung ating um, activity. After this, I'm gonna go at your respective um, FB groups para i-upload ko yung inyong pag uploadan So, ayan, simulan nyo nang gawin. Thank you also for joining and good morning, everyone. Happy lunch. See you again on our next lecture. Ayan. Madik madiading ko manjak agak sepay lang te encoded ita. Tagijag damdamag te encoded madi. It's yellow paper. Sasabihin ko yung meron tayong time na mag-encode -e kayo. It's very easy to encode. Parang ako din mas convenient mag-encode, diba? But um I'm recording kasi your um what do you call this? I'm recording the style on how you write because this is what we're going to do on the exam. We're going to write your answers on papers during your examination. So, I'd like to see your penmanships. And so, madi pa yung mabalin ma-encode, ha? Written. Handwritten. Yan. Thank you. Ala, baka dapat humabol nga question bago tayo mag-end ng ating live stream. Dapat? 30 seconds. Tap na no, makahabol kay iti. Um, what do you call this? Questions nyo. Awan? Mm, lang araw daw na wanti questions nyo mga kapatid. That's it for today. And again, lecture for today. Good morning once again. Kanina ko pa sinasabi. And God bless everyone.